So I'm lucky enough to be out in the RSPB reserve here in Sandy, along with some work that I'm doing for the RSPB. But I get also to have a look around this wonderful beast. Now it is electric despite the noise that you can hear coming from the fans, which are quite noisy. Um, but I think you'll agree it's not a bad looking vehicle, is it? Now the vehicle comes in two options, the progressive and the premium. So the Progressive comes with a high level of standard equipment, which does indeed include the bum warmer, air conditioning, and a number of other features such as satellite navigation and things like that. Uh, a nice touch screen, uh, functionality around Bluetooth, and all of those good things. So there's quite a high level of spec. So what do you get for the premium spec? Well, first of all, for the premium spec, you get these 16 inch alloy wheels. You also get the, um, full color body colored bumpers and, and all that kind of stuff you actually get this metallic paint now the reality is i prefer the brighter more vibrant silver color this for me still classifies as we used to call it in the trade doom blue um not my favorite but hey listen it's metallic and it's it probably looks better when we've got some sunshine right um you also get led lights on the uh, on the, the upgraded version so my question to you is do you really need all of that stuff now you might want to personalize it with a bit of metallic paint and the alloy alloy wheels will be okay in some circumstances so depending on whether your fleet or whether you're a small business wanting to make a statement will be the difference between whether you pay the extra two thousand pounds for the premium version because there's not really a lot in terms of comfort or additional internal specification that would make you run out and buy it. Now before we get onto all that electric malarkey, let's understand if this is a van that will do a job for you. It's all about whether it's fit for purpose for your business, small business operation, whatever you do. Now, is this any good? So, you have 2.9 cubic meters in there. Now, what, is, what does that give us? Well, at the base here, 1.8 meters. Now, there will be a folding um, sort of side, uh, a folding bulkhead, that's the word I was looking for, so that you can get through. Now, that will give you up to three meters, which would be a significant length on such what is a relatively small vehicle. It's a compact version of this vehicle. So 1.8 meters at the base. Um, you can definitely get your uh, pallet in the side there, 1,240 mil between the side wheel arches and 1,500 plus mil, um, uh, you know, full width wise. So there is a good load capacity, 544 kilos, which is lighter or less than weight in terms or less weight able to carry than your diesel version. Um, but there is a long wheelbase coming, uh, which will have an extra probably 25 centimeters or so. So taking you up over two meters but also giving you 722 kilos now, that's all to do with something to do with the axles that they can put a, a particular type of axle on the slightly longer one giving you a bit more weight so as you can see these are 60 40 doors so they they kind of um uh, 60 and 40 well that's exactly what they are um but you can of course push them uh beyond 90 degrees out to 180 degrees um and the same for this size now I've got to say, the functionality down here is not quite as good as I've seen on other vehicles. It's not as simple and it's a little bit firmer. It, maybe it's just cold and my hands are cold and I don't like it, but I've seen it easier and also more visible. So a little bit of yellow on there would have done nicely. Um, they seem to have uh, given you some some load protection on the, the side walls there for, for this particular vehicle, but of course I would always make sure that it is fully ply lined and protected. There is however protection on the floor, which I quite like. It's, um, I wouldn't say it's sort of particularly non-slip, but it is a protective cover and it does work for you. Now, because this is an electric version, tucked away here we have the charging cable. Now the charging cable obviously is um, for charging, but on the AC, because if you're going, that's the wall box that you get at home. If you go out into the public charging infrastructure, typically you'll be charging on a DC kind of charger and you won't need to use a cable from the vehicle, but you will plug in and we'll go and have a look at that in a minute. So the question to you is, 
Does this do a job for you? 544 kilos, 1.8 uh, meters load length at the base, 2.9 cubic meters, 1240 mil between the arches. Doors, they work, they go out uh, the way, allowing you to pull up to the, uh, to the loading bays if you have one. Uh, gives you a, a variety of options. So is it practical for you? And one other small important point, whilst at the back here, is that no towing seems to have been consigned to the past because 1,450 kilos, which is not an unsubstantial amount for a little beast like this. So 1,450, although the Renault version seems to be able to do 1,500, I'm, semantics, right? But, you know, 1,450 kilos, big thumbs up. Towing is beginning to get into the electric ecosystem. So as I was walking around, I noticed that this panel was here. It's not actually easy, it doesn't pop out, but there's actually nothing here. So this is for the diesel variant, um, and they've chosen not to do much with that. And I, I don't know whether that's going to cause confusion, or is it? You tell me. So whilst I'm out here still at the front um, and I'm warming up slightly as the bells go off quietly in the background, um, I wanted to touch about the charging point here. Now, nice big Mercedes-Benz badge, making sure everybody knows that you've got a Mercedes. But a quick click of the button and access the charge point. Now you have AC and DC charging. Now I touched on that a moment ago. So AC is your slow wall box charging that you will use the cable provided with the vehicle for. You would plug it in and charge that overnight. So it's a seven kilowatt uh, speed of charging. Um, I think it goes up to 11, in fact, 11 kilowatts. But typically at your home, you will have seven. In a workplace, you might have 11 kilowatts. So you could be fully charging this vehicle in four hours from an AC charger, which would be brilliant. 75 kilowatt hours, that was kilowatts, speed of charging. Oh, it's all kilowatts and kilowatts hours and blah. Um, but 75 kilowatt DC charging, which will get you from um, 20 to 80% in sort of 35-ish minutes. So that gives you a really good boost. Next question is, what range does the whole vehicle give you? What battery size? So it's a 45 kilowatt hour battery of usable energy, um, which will carry you 176 miles of your WLTP. Now, let's be really clear about the WLTP number. The WLTP number is not what you will get typically in real life with a full load. Mercedes-Benz have typically been really good at giving you uh, a very accurate range. Now, this is platform shared between Renault, Nissan, and of course, Mercedes. I don't think you're getting the same integrity of mileage. So here in the winter, we started with a full battery and 130 miles of range available. But quickly, I realized that having done 40 miles and used 50 miles of range, and then today used 20 miles and 30 miles of range, that there is uh, some changes that go on. It's not as accurate as you can get from the Mercedes-Benz Vito, for instance. But that said, it's not dissimilar to many other products on the market. So just be aware of your range and make sure that you test it in the circumstances where you will use it with the weight that you will use it. And most dealerships should make one available to you to have a three or four or five day test drive so that you can operate within your own environment and context so that you can make an informed decision, not just based on this video or importantly, the manufacturer details. So what about behind the wheel of the Mercedes-Benz e Citan? Well, I've got to say, I'm very impressed with the layout the layout is very clear, the, the functionality through all of the different aspects, whilst a little bit busy, is pretty simple to use. Uh, there is some touch, haptic kind of things going on, but there's also some good old fashioned switches, which allow you to navigate through the various aspects of both this dashboard and of course your touchscreen, um, which has Apple Android and Apple CarPlay and Android Auto available, of course, too. 
a nice layout of dash. It's an interesting mix here, knowing both the Renault product and also the Mercedes product, um, you can see that there is some Renault and there's some Mercedes. It's kind of an interesting mix uh, in, in all of this. Um, I am slightly confused by the gear stick area because there is no lighting for it. And so at night, you can see everything but the gear stick and the, uh, and the buttons down the side, which I found a little bit unusual. Um, there's a nice uh, central binnacle here um, with a nice amount of cubbyhole space and um, an armrest for your journeys. And of course, above the driver here, you've got places for paperwork and storage. I, I will say, I mean, there's cup holders down the middle here, um, just which I suppose are okay. But I kind of feel like I, I haven't got enough cup holders. But anyway, there's a little bit of storage here on the dash so that the, um, the daily newspaper can wallow around in that space. Uh, there's places to hang stuff up over there. So it is ultimately quite a practical cab. The seats are very comfortable and you've got a good degree of flexibility. And of course you can move the steering wheel for both um, rake and reach. So that's all good too. So comfort wise, you're going to be very happy in this vehicle. So one of the good features I like is the camera that is on the vehicle. So as I'm reversing out, um, I've got a clear view of what's behind me, even though it's a little frosty and the mirrors are not so clear. So once you're in the vehicle, you'll immediately realize that the pickup is really quite quick. It's only 102, 122 brake horsepower and 90 kilowatts, but it's got really nippy performance, especially that 0 to 30, which is great for this kind of vehicle. So on this beautiful cold wintry morning, it is actually really a very pleasant place to be. I've got a lovely bum warmer. Uh, the seats are very comfortable. Um, I'm not sure I've seen this kind of material before, but it is very comfortable. It's, it, it, you know, I've got good seat adjustment. All of the functionality that I would normally expect to see on the steering wheel, as I think I've touched on already. So all of that is really good news for me good visibility. The vehicle, I think, is really good on the road. It really soaks up the bumps. And given that I've got an empty um, load space behind me, I think that's a really good thing. I haven't got all that banging and the noise that I would normally associate with an empty van. So whilst you're driving, you've got two driving modes that you can choose from, comfort and eco mode. Eco mode just restricts that um, top end power so that it gives you maximizing your range and of course comfort is just your your standard performance another thing i think i might have neglected to mention is that the parking sensors are both front and rear so that you get an indication if you're getting too close to the vehicle in front uh, as just as pulling out on the roundabout there it, it clicked in um, but also uh, you know just gives you good all-round visibility and protection especially when you've got those uh, color-coded bumpers So as you can see in the mirror that you've got the blind spot assist. On motorway driving, this is a very comfortable vehicle. Again, as I've said, I found this vehicle really nice to drive. It's good and firm in the grip on the steering wheel and with the blind spot assist and there's all kinds of safety systems available on this vehicle as standard, which differentiates it from the rest of the competition. This vehicle feels, yeah, just exactly what I would expect from Mercedes-Benz. So one final thing as I'm pulling up to a halt coming off of the dual carriageway is that we've got three types of regeneration available, which is done adjusting the steering, uh, the steering, the gear stick. You push it to the left and then up and down to increase or decrease. So you can coast, you can have nominal regen, or you can have slightly bigger regen basically. Not quite one pedal driving and not the same as you'd expect from the Mercedes-Benz Vito, but still very good. So that has been a review of the Mercedes-Benz e-Citan. 
33,995 pounds seems challenging, I think, in the context where you've got Stellantis product that can do a bit more, carry a bit more, and Renault and possibly Nissan, I'm not certain of the price of the Nissan, that are a little bit cheaper. It is well equipped. It is Mercedes-Benz feeling inside and out, albeit with a little bit of Renault switch gear. It seems capable whilst not setting any records. 544 kilos payload, 2.9 cubic meters of space, but the same that you will find in your competitor product. All in all, the most important thing is to get your bum on a seat, a heated seat at that, um, and test the vehicle and go and see if it will make, uh, make a difference and do a job in your business. Remember, over time, this is not going to be optional. Going to an electric vehicle, certainly by 2030, where 70% of all vehicles sold will be electric, it's time to get started on your electric journey. And maybe the Mercedes-Benz e-Citan does that for you. Have a great day.